Hey, welcome to the first ground instruction for exercise 18. And on this one, we're going to focus on just a basic landing. So think of a good landing as a result of a good approach. If your aircraft is configured for landing once you are on final and your approach path and descent rate are all optimized, then the landing is just a product of all of these things coming together. Also, the skill of landing an airplane does not just come from lots of practice, but rather from good quality and focused practice. So think of the landing as starting all the way back here, about 300 feet up and on short final. So your final approach should be focused on these things. Ailerons get you on the runway center line. Your rudder keeps your nose straight with the center line. Flaps should be in full by now, and you should be trimmed to 60 knots. If you're in gusty wind conditions, increase airspeed to about 65 knots and maintain power in at about 13 to 1500 RPM until gliding distance to the runway is assured. So your final approach kind of looks like this. You're configured to land, you're on center line, and you're straight. Once assured gliding distance to the runway, power slowly to idle. Start the flare just before your aiming point by slowly bringing the control column back towards you. Eyes down the runway, straight ahead. Now once you've settled on the ground, keep that control column all the way back into the rollout. So just a couple points about the flare. Langley has short runways, so keep the piano keys as your aiming point, but then when you go into the flare, make sure your eyes are down the runway. That'll help with your pitch control. When you bring the control column all the way aft, resist to bring it back forward at any time whatsoever, unless you are approaching a stall. Also, if your approach becomes unstable at any time, just overshoot. Some safety considerations that will help you with your landings are to remember that pitch predominantly controls your airspeed and power predominantly your descent. So trim is essential in the circuit, but the good news is the more that you do it, the easier it gets. Remember to have gentle and continuous back pressure on the control. Keep your eyes all the way down the runway. And if at any point your approach becomes unstable, just overshoot. The overshoot process is quite simple, but it will be practiced a couple times just to make it instinctual. Step one is always full power in, car heat off. Step two is keep forward pressure on the control and prevent that nose from popping up. That could put you into an overshoot stall. We looked at that earlier. So you wanna keep forward pressure on the control column until you have enough airspeed. Then you can pitch the nose up to climb speed and bring the flaps up in stages. Just a couple common errors I've seen in the circuit and on, uh, and on landings are uh, focusing on the instruments too much. Use your eyes to give you the information. Don't use the instruments to give you your information. Lack of airspeed control can really be fixed with trim. And diving towards the runway on landing, I've seen this before too. You're not trying to force the aircraft down. If you put it into the right pitch attitude and bring power back, the aircraft will land. So it's just being patient and having a good timing of the flare. So take a read through these notes on a stabilized approach. These are taken directly from the private pilot flight test guide, and it basically identifies what you need to have on your approach. If your approach is missing any of these things, then generally you must overshoot because you haven't set your aircraft up for landing. Just a couple notes on landings. Landings don't come naturally. They come with a lot of work and a lot of focus and a lot of practice. So don't stress. We'll get this, and uh, if you have any questions, just bring them to your lesson.